Join me and an old friend as we ride electric bikes while towing trailers to discover the shores and the marshes of the Ottawa River and the wild Plaisance Falls on the site of the extinct North Nation Mills. I'll be riding my Pedigo City commuter with my Barrio bicycle camper in tow, and Gaetan will be borrowing my Bosch tube and my solar cargo trailer for his gear. But since the Bosch system doesn't accept solar charging, the solar panel will simply be a conversation piece and dead weight. I should mention that it's the very first time that Gaetan rides a bike with a torque sensing system without a throttle, and in the confusion of the departure arrangements, I forgot to explain the difference between the Bosch system and the Caden system he's familiar with. After leaving my condo on the Loasis Street, we head southward on Monte Pema. Gaetan seems to be doing just fine so far. We're heading for Maloney Boulevard, a major east-west four-lane thoroughfare. Since we're riding the bicycle trail, we plan to cross the street at the pedestrian light, which allows only about 15 seconds to get across. Gaeta had to learn the hard way that with a mid-drive e-bike that doesn't have a throttle, you have to gear down to the lowest gear before coming to a stop. That's the largest of the rear cassette sprockets. Otherwise, it can be quite hard to get the bike rolling again, especially when you're towing a heavy trailer. At the traffic light, by the time he figured out how to get rolling, the light had turned red, and a cop happened to see him. The young officer pulled us over to give my 70-year-old pal a humiliating speech about being careful when crossing the street. I felt guilty because I should have taken some time with him before hitching the trailers for him to get familiarized with the Bosch system. Now that the street crossing episode is behind, we're heading down Main Street in the direction of the Ottawa River, which will never be far from us for the rest of the trip. We turn onto a short section of the Route Vert Trail that runs along the river. We're passing through Saint-Cartier Marina, one of half a dozen marinas in the Ottawa Gatineau area of the Ottawa River. Then the trail continues for a while. We stop briefly to admire this wonderful specimen of Aspen. To avoid the main drag, we take quiet but bumpy Hurtaby Street. After a further 18 kilometers, we reach the paper mill town of Masson Angers and cross the bridge that spans the Julièvre River. The river looks deceptively dry because most of it is diverted to produce electricity for the paper plant. This is an example of what the river looks like at the same time of the year, about 90 kilometers upstream. The multiple hydro dams have transformed the wild river 
into a series of quiet interconnected lakes. It's time for lunch, so we make a small detour to settle down on a park bench with sandwiches we prepared before leaving. About three kilometers outside of Masson, we encounter some road construction, which doesn't really create any problem for us. We just want to take our time and enjoy the moment. Now we're riding through the town of Thurso. We drove right by the pulp and paper plant that lies empty since its closures in 2019. It meant the loss of 350 jobs in this one company town. Many such plants have been victim of the drop in the use of newspaper created by the digital technologies. One silver lining is that we no longer have to put up with the stench of the permeating rotten egg smell that the smokestacks used to pump out 24-7. Now we're back on the road to Plaisance. We decide to ride the rest of the way on a trail called Sentier de la Carrière, a path that runs from Thurso to the park. We stop briefly at the park office to confirm our registrations. Now we set up camp. After supper and a nice cup of tea, we study the maps of the park and decide which trails we want to explore during the following days. Michelle and Michael come to meet us for a bike ride. By the way, each of us will be riding an electric bike. We arrive at a lookout called La Falaise, the cliff. It provides a beautiful panorama overlooking the Ottawa River. 
As is customary when cyclists stop to admire the beauty of the surroundings, they invariably turn their gaze away and enter into conversation. Michelle recalls a religious book she read entitled The Strange Camel. It provides a creationist explanation as to why the camel has so many qualities that allow it to live in the desert. I won't go into detail in this video, but it's so interesting that I should read about this amazing animal. Now we're leaving Small Peninsula and we're taking the bridge across to Big Peninsula. Shortly after, we're caught in the rain and take refuge in the bird watch lean to. It's called Big Peninsula Marsh, a bird watcher's paradise. The rain has stopped, the sun's out again, and we're back on our bikes. Most of Big Peninsula is private farmland, the white part on this map. We saw a sign that said Marais des Rubaniers. I had never heard the word Rubanier before. It shares the root ruban, which means ribbon. I took out my phone to consult the La Rose dictionary. La Rose defines the strange word as a person who makes ribbons. Alternatively, a machine that makes ribbons, or a wholesaler of ribbons. Gaetan says there must be a plant in this march that has that name. Of course, I thought, that must be it. In fact, when I looked up a dictionary of technical terms, I learned that it is, in fact, a long, narrow, grass-like plant that has the shape of long ribbons. In English, botanists called it Spargenium, but its colloquial English name is less esoteric, Burreed. Here we're standing at the highest part of the boardwalk. It's really a wonderful place for bird watchers. 
frog watchers too, and turtle watchers, and muskrat watchers, and beaver watchers. I'm explaining that with my GoPro 8 Black, I don't have a selfie screen like on a phone or on the more recent GoPro 9. So I have to aim the camera and hope for the best, which is usually not too bad. As it turns out, the camera is aimed a little too high. Here we see a muskrat swimming away from us. The GoPro just isn't suitable for this kind of photography. I must get a camera with telephoto lens. He's diving, and oops, he's surfacing again. Now he seems to be chewing on something. Here we have a turtle wandering across the trail. Although there are a lot of turtles to be seen in this park, according to the Canadian Wildlife Federation, all freshwater turtles in Canada are in danger of extinction. The four major causes are death by roadkill, habitat loss due to the ever-growing human population, loss of eggs due to natural predators, and poaching for the pet trade. At the end of the day, Gaeta and I visit Michel and Michael's campsite. Michelle proudly shows us their latest camping equipment. Inside the tent, she shows us their new queen-size air mattress, an incredible 18 inches thick. This tent has an extension for attaching it to the back of their SUV. I would have liked to see it in action, but the campsite, apparently, didn't leave them enough room to put the tent and the SUV together. Now she shows us Mike's folding table, where he does the cooking, complete with shelves and a paper towel dispenser. Michael shows us his screened-in kitchen, and to close off the evening, he prepares us a delicious meal of spicy chicken wings and a garden salad. We've arrived at the Plaisance Falls. Along the one kilometer walking trail, there are several observation points that let us get right up close to the site's spectacular natural beauty. With their 63 meter vertical drop, the falls are quite impressive. On-site interpretive panels bring to life this important chapter of history of the Petite Nation starting early 19th century. 
They recount the part this site played in the local history. The power of the water was the source of energy for running the North Nation mills, which comprised the sawmill and the flour mill. These were a major economic factor in founding of the village of the same name. It's now, unfortunately, just a historical footnote since the mills were abandoned as far back as 1903. Sentier de la Zizanie des Marais Zizanie strikes me as an odd way to describe a marsh. There's no direct translation, but Zizanie means mischief, misunderstanding, disunion, or discord. Tell me if I'm wrong, but to use the word that means discord or mischief suggests to me an anthropogenic view of nature, a world of chaos and dog-eat-dog. Ecologists think of a marsh as a perfect example of nature in balance, where a large number of species representing microorganisms, insects, plants, fish, amphibians, birds, and mammals live in harmonious equilibrium. But when we consider the fact that 95% of all the species that have ever existed on Earth have gone extinct, maybe the Zizani view is the correct one. Eventually, something in the ecosystem happens that changes its equilibrium and species die out.
We had decided that before leaving the park, we'd go for a walk on the Sentier du Pont Suspendu, the suspended bridge trail. And that's where Gaetan's going. He sees the entrance to the trail and he continues on. But I notice a no bicycles allowed sign. I decide to park my bike and camper and walk. I meet Gaeta on his way out and he confirms that the bridge isn't made for bicycles. Here's the bridge. A suspended bridge made of wood held up by steel cables. It crosses the Petite Nation Canal, which connects the Pentecostal Bay to the Petite Nation River. Very pretty. On this side, the trail narrows. I won't go any further. It's so quiet here, we don't hear any highway sounds. There's so much to see in this park. Be worthwhile to stay for a week. Oh look, there's a group of people on the bridge. Boy, it's quite shaky. I guess I should go back and catch up with Gaetan. Now for a lunch stop. Across the road is the Papier Masson newspaper plant, formerly known as the James McLaren Industries Pulp and Paper Mill. Masson Angers is both an industrial and a residential place, dating back to 1932. Hundreds of residents also work as civil servants for the federal government, commuting daily to and from the Ottawa Gatineau area. Masson Angers, a town of about 10,000 people, was amalgamated with the city of Gatineau. It is located about 30 kilometers from downtown Ottawa. This town straddles the Du Lièvre River, a tributary of the Ottawa River. Now we're back on the road. Since the very beginning, we've been riding against a very strong wind. This is to show how hard the wind is blowing. We stopped at Tim Hortons, 8 kilometers from home. The wind is so powerful that my 720 watt hour battery is empty after only 47 kilometers. I could have done better if I had traveled slower. I travel most of the way at 24 to 26 kilometers an hour. I could have saved battery power if I had slowed down to 20 to 22 and I might have been able to reach home. The blinking bar on the display indicates that the battery is empty. I used to have a spare battery, but my original battery failed after six years and had to be scrapped. 
The next best thing to having an extra battery is having an extra electric bike. I phoned my son for help and he's on his way here with my fat bike for finishing the trip. I don't have to worry that Gaetan will run out of juice because the Bosch tube I lent him has three batteries. Now my camper is hooked up to the fat bike and I'm equipped to complete the trip. The rest of the trip went without a hitch and was unremarkable except that the wind kept on blowing like mad. This is a tree in front of the high school at the end of my street that shows what I mean. This is a summary of the distances we traveled with and without our trailers. As we can see, the distance covered with and without the trailer is about the same. I'm happy that you joined me on this trip. If you'd like to see videos of my other trips, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel. If you'd like information about electric bicycles and about my Barrio Bicycle Camper, visit my website www.robertbario.com And remember, never quit cycling! <laughs>